All right, it's your boy Chuck Moolah. We are now tapped in with Money Thirsty J. What's going on with your Money Thirsty J? And I'm cool and dog, you know, in the studio, putting in work. Putting in that work, huh? Yeah. Set up, tell the people a little bit more about yourself. Shit, I'm born in New Orleans, you dig? Uh, but you know, spent the other half of my life in uh, BR, so you know. Oh yeah, how long you been out here in BR? Shit, BR 14 now, uh, in New Orleans 10. Oh yeah? Yeah. What made you come out here to Baton Rouge? What you seen it was like, you know, a little bit more going on in the music culture? Did you like it a little bit more? Or what what nah, made you come yeah. out this way instead of staying in the city? I'm about to say, it's just circumstantial. You know, Katrina niggas still being young, couldn't really, you know, make their decisions like that. But, you know, I done built the foundation out here. I got a lot of friends and family too, but I still go back home and got love in the city too, so you dig. You oh know? yeah, so look, when you first came out here to Baton Rouge, I know it was Katrina going on, but you know, being out here in a different place that's not really your hometown, did the people here really embrace you at the beginning, or was they kind of pushing you away knowing that you wasn't from here? Shit, I got people who fuck with me, I ain't gonna lie wholeheartedly, they, uh, they fuck with my creativity, just me being me and, you know, not trying to be like nobody, emulate nothing, just... Shit, just being yourself type shit. So. Gotcha, gotcha. So when you came out here, did you notice a difference between, you know, like the cultures, the landscape, you know, just overall as far as being in Baton Rouge opposed to being in New Orleans? Yeah, it's a little different, you dig? It's a, it's a little more spread out. It's a, it ain't that real compact city life, you feel me? So, you know, they got some things to do out here, don't get me wrong, but I feel like New Orleans just got a different, more culture, different things you can do. and even more cultural things you can do, but we all got his own culture though, man, from the jigging music to their own food and just everything that go out here, you dig? Right, speaking of the jigger music, you know, being from New Orleans, you know, that's not really our thing, but we kind of in tune with it because it's another part of Louisiana. Yeah. You know, when you make music, do you have like, do you keep it New Orleans or do you kind of jump into that Baton Rouge element? Shit, I keep it like me, to be honest. I don't even, you know, I, I still, I got city nigga cores, if you know what I mean. Like, right. that's how I was raised, so, like, it really ain't no other way just living in a different spot, you feel me? But I adapt to the culture, you know, use some of the lingo and shit, but that ain't my sound. I, I just don't sound like that, even if I try it. Right. So, like, if anything, you know, I do some city shit, if anything, but... It's just on some me shit. I just try to be unique in everything I do. Right. So how do you feel about, you know, how important is marketing to you? Because I ain't gonna lie, I see you tapping with a lot of different platforms. I see you on a lot of different blogs. You know, do you feel like the marketing is more important than the music? Yeah, definitely. Like, the music, what they say, 10% music and 90% business, like, shit, but marketing is everything, though. Like, you gotta build your brand in your face, because there's a bunch of people making a bunch of good music, but People want, you know, just know you, know what you got going on. Is it truth in your music or, you know, you just how you coming type stuff. So it's always good to get your face out there and build the brand, man. Right. So as far as building your brand and, you know, tapping in with different platforms and stuff like that, um, how important is having a single? Matter of fact, what is a, a, a current single that you pushing that you would feel like, you know, if I'm tapping in with you, what song they need to hear in order to know, you know, I like this this person's catalog? Shit, but, uh, it going right now is the single I'm pushing, but the uh, importance of a single is, it's easier to push and, like, it's going to save you money than more than, than a mixtape and an album, to be honest. You just focus on that one thing, so, uh, but it's good to get that one song, get that traction behind you, then, you know, you give the people something they want to listen to. But, huh? uh, right now, my single is A going off my up-and-coming mixtape, Manifestation. It's dropping uh, March 27th, but it going out right now, you dig on all platforms. I got the video out and everything shot by Benzo. We shot that in Houston at uh, GNB Studios. Shout out Be Done for the album too. So, uh, shit, it going, man. It's like, it's that auto-tune pain and bars slash spazzing and like it's, it's like four different type of styles on, you know, but it's me. <laughs> gotcha. So yeah. being from Louisiana, what are some differences that you see? I see you say you you know you putting a lot of work out there in Houston as as well. So, do you think it's a big difference between being based out of a market in Texas opposed to being based out of a market in Louisiana? Yeah, cause Texas got a lot of. Um, I feel like the fans engage a little better. Uh, it's more media outlets. It's more. It's just more things you can do with music out there. To be honest, like you know we getting there slowly but surely. We got some things going, but. It ain't on that level like Texas is. Like, if you can get a Texas market, it'll be so big. And, like, they got guys who sell a million just out their own state. 
Shit. Right. It's just that, man. It's like a gold mine to me. I ain't gonna lie. So I fuck with Houston, though, you dig? See, I stayed in Houston two years, too. Gotcha. So you dig? One thing I do notice about being in Texas, you have a lot of artists that sometimes they might not go mainstream, you know, to what the world would say is the mainstream. Right. But for the most part, you could get a lot of independent millionaires out of there. So let me ask you, what are some of your future goals and plans? Like, do you plan on signing to a label eventually, or do you want to just keep everything independent? Shit, I would like to keep everything independent, but I don't mind signing to a label to get to where I need to go. But at the end of the day, that's going to be independent at the end. But, you know, sometimes you need a little help to get it started, to get a jump started. So, you know, I'm open to all ideas, but as far as my grinding, how I approach it, I'm grinding for independent work and to build my brand and put more people on in my company, in my entertainment service. Gotcha. So who are some of your favorite artists, you know, you know, people that you're listening to coming up or even people that you're listening to or inspired by that's up and coming right now in music? Uh, it's a lot of artists. I'm like a sponge, but like right now, you know, Wayne for sure. Wayne, Listen to right. Cash Money, Hot Boys, all that growing up from Master P, No Lemon, Soldier Slim, Kid Kid, Young Greatness. Like, I'm always tapped in with the sit-in with people doing your dig, so... Well, as far as right now, I be listening to what Lil Durk, I fuck with the Chicago scene, Lil Durk, G Herbo Polo, uh, New York, I like fucking around with Dave East, uh, Dian Q, even the old school niggas like uh, Jada Kiss, Styles P, you know, I fuck with that, that type era. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Shit, like all over, but bro, I ain't gonna lie. Like, <laughs> Texas, like, Sauce Walker, like, you know, you just pick a state and it's like, all right, I got somebody I fuck with, or you just name some artists, like, I fuck with some songs, I'm just a music head, like, like R&B and, you know, all different forms and fashions of music, like, I told OTR, I was just on some, like, I accept music for what it is, then what it's not, like, if nigga, no, you know, feel me on that, like. Right, right, right. So besides in the music world, what are some things, uh, uh, you know, some of your favorite things to do just as a person? Like what you do outside of just shit. tapping in with the music, the music world? Shit, I be hooping too, you dig? Oh yeah, you get it in on that court? Yeah, man, come get that work on that court if you need it, you dig? <laughs> ah, you, got, you about to start a basketball challenge, huh? <laughs> For real, though, yeah, coming up, though, I played a lot of ball, man. You know, had hoop dreams before I had music dreams. Oh yeah, all right, so is there any up and coming, you know, Music videos, any up and coming projects that you have, or are you just kind of just pushing this one single as of right now? Nah, I dropped a second single off the tape already. It's called Big Dog, and uh, the video is gonna be out now. So, it, well, by the time you see this video, it's gonna be out now. But, <laughs> shit, Big Dog. I got uh, another one shot by Benzo. Shot that one in Houston. Shit, uh, off the, I shot uh, ten videos off the tape. It's ten songs, so I shot all videos to them. So. Uh, what, seven by my guy shot by Benzo and another three by DC Visual who I just tapped in with. I've been messing with him, man. So uh, shout out to my videographers, you dig? So. so speaking of video, let me ask you this. I know like, um, you know, nowadays we kind of have those videos where it's just kind of people standing in front of the camera, rapping the bars. Is that something, is that an approach that you take or do you kind of put time into like storylines or actually critiquing when it comes to doing a video? Nah, I uh, critique, it just, you know, depends on the song too, but nah, I got a lot of videos with thought and storylines in there too, and I got some running guns just turned up, and I got some videos with a bunch of effects, you dig, so I got a little bit of everything for whatever you like, you dig. Right. So when it comes to, you know, your creative process, when it goes to making a song, like I heard you say you had a song called Big Dog, so what is your creative process when it comes to making songs, is it kind of just comes or do you plan on or do you actually like write them or do you uh, let them just flow shit i do both uh you know depending on how i feel i kind of like to come with a song and freestyle a song too so uh you know it, it just inspiration from anywhere and shit working with swagger at swagger studio shit he helped get me right too so you know he ain't just pressing record and just letting you say no anything or you know he gonna tell you like bro that can be better like you know, really tapping with you and try to help groom you and, you know, y'all build a sound together. So, you know, just working here and constantly just things that go on through life, you know, I always just have inspiration and shit, you know, that's just kind of how that shit come about. Gotcha, gotcha. So, you know, being a brand coming up in this era, coming up in this time where social media is big. What do you feel about social media? Is it something that you feel like you need as an artist or do you feel like you can make it without social media? Nah, you definitely need the social media, I ain't gonna lie. 
it, uh, it just it's another tool to help you grow and push your brand. But at the same time, you still need to do some street work. Though. Yeah. You need to touch the people, go travel, because social media can only do one thing, but that uh, street work and touching somebody personally can last a lifetime. So. Gotcha, it's gotcha. Big. So let me ask you this. Being on social media, knowing that, you know, all this stuff is going on in the world, we just had the pandemic, we just had, you know, we got the world war going on right now. <laughs> do you feel like a lot of these things, and even with social media, do you feel like it has an effect on your mental health? Uh, I mean, if you let it get to you. Right. But, I mean, if you handle your business, post what you need to post, uh, 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 then get off that. It's probably somebody who on a fake page trolling you or something, man, that shit. <laughs> man, nigga ain't talking about that shit in real life. I don't know about all that shit. Right. I'm a man. I rap a lot, but I'm a man of few words and, you know, more action. So, I don't, I don't entertain none of that. Right. So, matter of fact, let's speak about that. How we were talking about Texas earlier, opposed to the Louisiana market. You know... Here in Louisiana, it's kind of difficult to build a brand based off of beef. In Texas, a lot of times, you see a lot of people that might get notoriety or get Texas, you know, get um notoriety just off of beef and stuff like that. So, do you feel like in this time, news is more important than music or mu uh, music is more important than news uh. from your perspective? My perspective, music is more important than news, but the news will get you, uh, get the eye on you though, it get the attention. So right. Well, I'm about to say the news will get you there, but the music gonna keep them there. Gonna keep That's them there. That's how it go. But as far as doing all that beefing and all that, this bit too small. They gonna find you and kill you, boy. <laughs> right, you right. Run into each other, and something just gonna happen. Right. Out there, you can kind of. I'm in Arlington, and I can be way over in Fort Worth, and you know, you kind of just you might not see each other like it can go like that. But oh, shit, man, it's been too small, my nigga. Like that's why it's just like a what, like a bowl, like they they call it. So. All right. So being here, you know, you from New Orleans, you you know built your brand out here. You building your brand out here in Baton Rouge. Do you feel like it will ever come to a point to where you have to leave Louisiana? Yeah, definitely. So sure, after you get to a certain point, you know, you just all grow shit and. I, me and my opinion, I think it's better places to grow and more resources and just a better environment for certain things, you know, as far as music and shit. I feel like, you know, I'm still going to have a house or something out here, you know, still come see family if they're still out here. But as far as conducting my business, I, I'd rather take it as well. Right. So speaking of, you know, leaving the hometown, coming to Baton Rouge, what are your some of your favorite things to do or favorite places to eat here in Baton Rouge for a person that never been here before? Uh, that's tough. I mean, it just depends on what you want. Nah, I can't. Uh, you know, you ain't really into yeah, that. Uh, you yeah. just do what you do and stay out the way. I huh? mean, you know, I eat a lot of places out here. Shit. Oh, man, this little fire Jamaican spot downtown, uh, Royal Taste of Jamaica. Oh, yeah. I, I need me a free plate after this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, I'm about to say, I might go over there and get a plate after this one. Nah, oxtails be busting, fall off the bone. Uh, I mess with that curry shrimp, come with uh, carrots and potatoes with the gravy on there with the mixed vegetables. Man, they meat potties. If you like, like, not meat pies, how you told me meat potties? Okay. You like, yeah, you fuck with the meat potties, man, they got like six different flavors. Like, the spicy beef, man, I be tanning them bitches up. I get like three, four every time. What I about go. what about in the, uh, in the city? Like, what's some of your favorite places in the city? Because you know, People come from come to New Orleans. They looking for that food. What's what's some of your must go to places when you tap in the city, or you kind of hit the corner stores? I mean, and if you want, yeah, sit down, go like Morrow's or some or some fancy like that. But me, I, I go get me a man choose plate or something right quick. And I just <laughs> want me a like eight piece, right? And some fries or something, man, or like hot sausage sandwich. Uh, who else? Uh, we that or uh, who that? I'm tripping. No, nah, no, nah, we who that? Or go to who that you dig? Or right. catch the wings and shit. The shit I've been instead just been on some stick and move or I'm going to a family event and they already cooking already, so most of the time I don't really bad to eat all you dig. Be getting that good old auntie or somebody mama home cooking, you feel me? So Alright, so this is one of my you know, one of my next questions I wanna ask you here on camera. If you had to speak it into existence right now, you know you say you gotta uh, um, tape called Manifestation. If you had to speak it into existence and talk to your future self, what are you? What would you say? When one of, you want to be one of your accomplishments when it comes to this entertainment game? One of my accomplishments, uh, or something that you desire, something that you had to speak to your future I self. Mean, I 
mean, all I really wanted and been speaking the whole time, I just want a consistent fan base. I just want to grow with this shit and get some consistent money from it and help it build my build my brand and put people on. That's all I really want to do. Like, it's okay. getting, as long as that happens, shit, I'm fine. If I put one person on and put 10 people on, shit, you know, I'm satisfied. But, you know, I'm always going to want more. But, right. you know, that, that's all I really just should direct for. Yourself in the future, huh? Well, you heard, you heard it here first, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so one of my last and final questions for you. You know, we got so much going on in the world, this, that, and the third. How important is building a relationship with the community or the youth in, you know, your area? Like, do you feel like it's something that you should do more to, you know, help the kids or any up-and-coming artists? Do you have plans on getting into that soon? Uh, not at the moment, but I do plan to do that in the future. Cause shit, I want to help as many people as I can. Um, as many people want to be helped, you dig? I know how it was for a nigga growing up, you know? Right. I had brothers and shit, you know, but we ain't never had no dad or shit, you know, uncles here and up, but it don't really be too much guidance or purpose. Cause like, when you're doing something, dog, you really miss all the bullshit and shit that be going on in the streets and all that, man. Like, you just gotta find your purpose or something to occupy you to get you to where you're going. So, Keep you focused, huh? Yeah, but that's definitely, I'm gonna do that in the future, though. I just gotta get to that uh, level. Get, that get where you get. going at first. Gotcha, gotcha. Speaking of that, is there anyone that you might want to shout out? Or anyone that had, you know, influences on your campaign, producers, family yeah, members, whatever? Man, you know, first off, shout out my dog, Money Thirsty DJ, you dig? Gotcha. That's my, fucking, that's my the other artist on the label, you dig? My fucking dog slash co CEO. Uh, shout out Swagger Music, Swagger Studios, Swagger always get me right, dog. Shout out my videographer, shout out Benzo, DC Visuals. You know, shout out the fam, and dig, I be going on and on about them, you dig, but you know, shout them out too. So, uh, just, everybody on the project shit. Swagger produ uh, engineered the whole thing. I got about five or, five or six of his beats on that too, so. You're gonna hear that production on there. Um, as far as the other beats, you know, I, I forgot their names, man. You know, I got I get beat packets here and then, and, you know, be here on that, man. Shout out to you too, dog. I'm gonna reach out. But uh, that's really everything. That's everybody you dig, man. Fuck with it, Manifestation, March 27th. Long live Pook, you dig. We're doing this for you, man. So, uh, 10 songs, 10 videos. Two videos out right now. We're gonna release a video a week, you dig? We coming, we being consistent, you know, we trying to stay on the neck, you dig? All 2022 and forever. Let's get it, let's get it.